We are going to figure out what the A in the front does when you have a number like 2 sine of x, 1 half cosine x. What is that number going to do? Now, if you go back and graph just sine of x, just basic sine of x, what does it look like? What does the graph of that look like? Well, we don't know it. Nobody seems to know it, right? Well, I know it, but let's say we don't know it. Well, one easy way to fix that problem quickly is pick values for x and find out what sine of x equals to. So let me pick values for x. I'm going to use degrees. Radian degrees doesn't matter, but for today I use degrees for now. When x is 0 degrees, what sign of 0? You take your calculator out, make sure you're in degree mode. You go 0, and I want to take the sign of that. It goes at 0. 30 degrees. I go 30, take the sign of it. 0.5. Sixty degrees. Sixty, the sine of that, point eight six seven. Point eight six six or eight seven. Ninety degrees. What's the sine of that? One. Hundred and twenty degrees. One twenty, what's the sign? Point eight seven. 150 degrees, 0.5, 180 degrees, 0. Again, I'm just pushing the numbers on the calculator. I just happen to know the answers. Two ten, negative 0.5, 240. Negative point eight seven two seventy negative one three hundred negative point eight seven three thirty negative point five three sixty back to zero and you can continue. You can continue. It doesn't stop there. Now, if I go and graph that, you're going to find out that the graph of sine x looks something like this. That's what it looks like. Remember seeing that before? This is the zero degree here. This peak value at 90 degrees, that's when it's one. This is the 180, that's when it's zero again. This is the 270 degrees. And that's the 360. How high does it go? What's the peak value? One. What's the lowest value? Negative one. The sign is always between minus one and one. It never goes above one. It never goes below a negative one. Unless you multiply it by a number in the front. Usually when you graph the sine or the cosine, we always tend to graph them using, instead of degrees, we use radian. 
And I don't know if you remember them, how to convert from degrees to radian, to go from degrees to radians. How do you do it? Anyone? You multiply or divide, yes? You multiply by what? Pi over 180. Or if you divide and you divide by 180 over pi. So if I do that, this is really zero radian. This is the pi over two. This is pi. This is three pi over two. And this is the two pi. That's what the sine of x looks like. It takes two pi to complete one full cycle. Two pi. Does anyone need paper? I got a lot of paper right there. There's pencils there too if you need them. There's pencil sharpener outside. So I'm just gonna say, you know, from now on just remember what the graph of sine x looks like. I'm gonna do sine x and cosine x on top of each other, like next to each other. And I'm not going to go through cosine x, do the same thing I did here. I'm just going to put the answer there. This is where you find out for sine x. I just showed you that, but I'll put it again. Because if you can just store this in memory somehow, that will make life easy for all of us. If you look at sine x, it looks like this. And it doesn't stop, it repeats itself. If you continue taking angles, you'll see it keeps going. And if you took negative values, it will continue to go. So it never stops, all the way, always. This is one full cycle. This is the zero, again, remember, this is the zero. This is the two pi. This is the pi. And what's this number? Pi over two, very good. And what's this number? Three pi over two, pi over two. very good. That's the basic sine of x. So when I say graph sine of x, just give me one full cycle of that, just give me that. How high does it go? One, down here what? Negative one, it's between these numbers. Then what's the cosine looks like? It's very similar to the sine, except you see this line here? If you move that line and put it right here, right there you put that line, that's what you'll have, you'll have the cosine. So if I move that line, the y-axis, and put it right here, you have the graph of the cosine. So the cosine starts here, ends right here. So that's what the cosine function looks like. I call it the Karate Kid. From the movie The Karate Kid, Daniel's son, when he was standing with his hands up in the air, so his arms like this, it comes down and it goes back up there. So that's what cosine function. This is cosine of x. Again, it goes as high as one, as low as what? Negative one. This is the two pi. This is the halfway point, that's the pi. This is the pi over two. And this one is what? 3 pi over 2. If I can remember these two pictures, if I can store them in my brain there, I can graph anything tonight. I'm going to give you.
Let's assume we memorize these two pictures. I'm going to have this sheet in front of me, but I'm going to assume I memorize them. I should be able to graph any function that looks like this for now. It doesn't have to be 1, could be 2, could be 3, could be negative 1, negative 2. So if I ask it to graph y equals 2 sine of x. Again, let me cheat a little bit here. Let me put sine of x here, up there. This is sine of x. Remember what sine of x looks like? It looks like this. Can you still see that? Yep. This is the 2 pi. This is the pi. 3 pi over 2. By the time you leave, you'll know all these numbers. And pi over 2. This is sine of x. So what do you think 2 sine of x will look like? I want to graph two, not sine of x, two of them. Shifting, shifting, what do you mean by shifting? No. That's different. Yeah, that's coming up. Yep, the peak will be, instead of one, will be a two. So what will happen here is going to amplify that. It's going to look like this. Still going to cross at these values. So it's going to go as high as what? 2. Down here, what? Negative 2. So this one, 2 sine of x. Now if I ask you to graph y equals one half cosine x. Again, I'll do that here. Now, what's cosine of x looks like? It looks like this picture. That's the cosine of x. This is the 2 pi here. There's pi. Pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. So what's one half cosine x will look like? How high is it going to go? Yep, half of that, right? So it's going to go to half, start from here. That's what it's going to look like. And that's one half cosine x. My amplitude now, we'll talk about something called amplitude. Our book defined the amplitude as the absolute value of A. A is the number in front of the function. So in this example, my amplitude is the absolute value of 2, which is what? 2. My amplitude for the cosine function 
it's the absolute value of one half which is what one half that's the amplitude that's how high it's gonna go Now let me try another example. Graph y equals negative 3 sine of x. Negative 3, not positive. Let's look and see. This is what sine of x looks like normally. This is sine of x. This is the 2 pi. This is the pi. I'm getting tired of writing everything, so I'll just put these two. That's sine of x. What is negative 3? If I don't have the negative 3, if it was just 3, that would mean what? How high would it go? Three units up. What is the minus sign going to do? What is it? It's going to flip it. It's going to flip it, which means what? It's going to make it go down as low as negative three here as high as three. So when you have a negative number in the front, that negative number will take the picture and flip it completely. It's called reflection. My amplitude still what? Yes, it's the absolute value of negative three, which is still three. It's always positive. Never negative. So that's what the number in the front does. If it's more than one, you stretch the picture. If it's less than one, you shrink the picture. If the absolute value is more than one, you stretch it. If you have a negative sign, you flip the whole thing. So that's the end of section 10.1.